Okay, now we're going to talk about how to power the flight controllers safely without frying anything, a couple of different ways of powering the flight controllers, capacitors, and why you may want to use one, and also how to make your own XD60 connector and battery lead uh, if you don't buy one pre-made. So as always, let's talk about multi-rater number one first because this, this entire build is so simple. Like it could not be any easier. How to power this? Well, the Dodo has its own built-in 5-volt voltage regulator, which is located right here. So you just plug in a battery, the voltage goes in, the full voltage of the battery. It will go through the 5-volt regulator. The flight controller will use that to power itself and then provide 5 volts to all of the 5-volt pins located throughout the flight controller. And that will power anything you connect to it, like your receiver, on-screen display, anything else. Before you plug in a battery, you want to make sure, check, double check, triple check, that you do not have any wires crisscrossed or you have any solder from one positive touching the solder of a negative, anything like that. Another thing I'll do is grab my multimeter, set it to the continuity mode, so if I do see any continuity, it's going to beep. If it beeps, that's bad because that means something is probably going to fry when you plug in a battery. And I will take this and put it on both sides of the XD60 connector. And it doesn't matter which way you do this. I know it just beeped right now, but that's just because there was energy inside of there, but... So we're not getting a beep, right? The next thing I will do is place one lead. So I got one lead on the negative. Once again, doesn't matter which one. You don't want to put the other lead on top of any carbon fiber because there's uh, not a type of lamination, but there's something on top and it's not going to complete that circuit if there is a short. So you want to put this on the edge where they cut the carbon fiber because there's nothing right there and I'm still not getting a beep. Now if I put this on the positive side, I want to do the same thing. Just put it on the edge of any carbon fiber, doesn't matter where, and I'm still not getting a beep. Now this does not catch all of the faults. There could be a short somewhere, but this will catch half of it. Like if you go back and watch my video, just search for how not to fry multi rotor parts. It's a two part video series and I explain exactly why uh, this only works for some cases. But I do believe I am good, so I'm going to plug in a battery. And we're not getting any smoke. The flight controller is not getting hot. Motors aren't getting hot. ESCs are not getting hot. So we're good. The motors are twitching though because we have not set up the ESCs or the flight controller in the uh, BL Heli Suite or Beta Flight, so that's actually pretty normal. The last thing I will do for this multi rotor is add in a capacitor. And the ones I use, they are 470, let me zoom in for you, 470 microfarads rated for 35 volts, and also make sure that it is low ESR. Right there, low ESR. We could sit here all day and talk about why capacitors are good. They do many different things. Uh, they help filter your video feed. They help protect against uh, voltage spikes and surges uh, from the uh, active brake damping from the ESCs and a couple other things. But long story short, I shoot for at least 600 microfarads. Total capacitance throughout the whole multi-rotor. And we're getting 453. So give me one second to solder this in. Okay, got it soldered in and put a zip tie on it. I'll probably go back and put another capacitor on it and make it a little bit longer so the zip tie is staying on better, but it'll work for now. So if we go back and recheck, I'm getting almost 900 microfarads, so that's more than enough. For this build, we have two different ways of powering this. And this, uh, I really want to explain this because I know not everybody's using the same two flight controllers that I am, so this will be good information. The Omnibus also has its own 5 volt regulator built into it, but the Omnibus has been known uh, for that voltage regulator frying because it's a different type of voltage regulator and it gets really hot. There have been cases where this regulator just fries itself from just getting too hot. There's been other cases where guys have tried to draw too much current by powering a camera and video transmitter off of this board, which will also make it get too hot and then fry itself. But don't worry, we're not doing that. We're actually using the PDB to power both of those. 
and there has been cases where it gets so hot that it affects the processor and the processor starts resetting itself. If you want to, you can power this fly controller with the full voltage of the battery and use its voltage regulator. The way you will power it is just take some scrap wire with you know nothing on either end and use uh, you're going to put your XC60 or your main battery lead on first and then just take that scrap wire run one wire from this main uh, positive pad one wire from the main negative pad put the power wire on this pin right here it is the third pin down from the top and in the middle do not use the fourth pin down do not use the second pin down if you use either one of these pins the you will fry the fly controller only use this pin three pins down in the middle and then put the ground wire on the one right to the left of it so the one right next to the edge of the board three pins down so power and ground that will power the fly controller anything connected to it and also put voltage in uh, beta flight your on-screen display telemetry all that good stuff just like the uh, dodo fly controller will your other option is to cut out this voltage regulator out the circuit completely so I'm going to cut these legs off just to remove it from the circuit and this is going to be the safer way of doing it and this uh, this is probably how you're going to end up doing it anyway if you ever do fry this voltage regulator so like I said you can power this with a full voltage of the battery and if you ever do fry the voltage regulator here's your workaround so I'm going ahead and showing you now I'm just going ahead and doing it you know to begin with and for everyone else that is using a flight controller that does not have its own voltage regulator this is how you will power it as well so in the last video we talked about this connector with these four signal wires coming from the ESC's and that gave us these two wires remaining these two wires are going to be 5 volts and ground this one on the very end is ground this one is 5 volts no matter what flight controller you are using you can use the motor output pins to power the flagging chore. So for example, on this here Omnibus, we have motors, uh, the signals for motors 1, 2, 3, and 4. Well, all of these pins in the middle are all 5 volt pins, and all the pins on the edge are all ground pins. You can pick and choose whichever one you want. It does not matter. Just for example, let's just say I want to use these pins right here in the middle on motor output number 2. So I'm going to place the 5 volt wire in the middle, ground on the edge. And just like with the rest of these wires, I'm going to do it on the bottom side of the board just to keep it clean looking. Okay, and there we go. Got my power and ground on it. Now the thing is, uh, if we were to plug in a battery, this would power the fly controller and provide 5 volts to all the other 5 volt pins because they're all connected to one another. But that is not going to put voltage in your uh, in beta flight your on-screen displays and telemetry because the flight controller is only seeing 5 volts and this doesn't just apply to this flight controller this applies to any flight controller that does not have a voltage regulator for every single other type of board where you have to power this with 5 volts there's also going to be VBAT pins I mean this applies to the X-Racer F303 the Seriously Pro Racing Evo the NACE32 and many others it doesn't know what the full voltage of the battery is because it's not seeing the full voltage. It's only seeing 5 volts. And that's why they have these separate VBAT pins. The VBAT pins, and only the VBAT pins, can accept the full voltage of the battery. So where are the VBAT pins on the Omnibus? It's actually the same exact pins that you would have used to uh, power it using the 5 volt regulator. So regardless, we still have to take some scrap wire and run it to the battery positive and negative and then go to those two pins. But first, let's make an XC60 connector. Or I should say battery lead. I'm going to go ahead and turn my soldering iron up to 450 degrees Celsius, where it previously was on 400. I'm going to take my XC60. And by the way, you can buy these pre-made. I just make my own because it's cheaper. This little negative symbol right there, I'm going to butt up my wire to that, and then I'm going to cut where this stops and then I'll do it again for the negative wire remember these helping hands I'm going to put my wire inside of here and tin the wire because this wire is so thick I'm going to tin one side and then rotate it and then rotate it again 
and we should be good. Now I'll do the same exact thing for the other wire. This rounded side is the negative side, so don't get them mixed up. Rounded, negative. And then heat up the solder, put it in, let it cool off, and there we go. Now I'm going to add more solder to here. Hold it in place until it cools off. Not cools off, but turns back into a solid. Rotate it around and do the same thing. Take some heat shrink and put it on. And there we go, there's your uh, new battery lead. So now let's tin these main pads. I'm going to tin the other ends of my leads. And then I'm going to solder it on. I'm going to take that scrap wire that I was talking about and solder it right on top of this battery lead. Same thing for the ground. So once again, power is the third pin down, middle pin. Ground is to the left of it. And there we go. Now we will get voltage in Betaflight, on-screen displays, and telemetry. And this doesn't just apply for the Omnibus. Like I said, this applies to everybody who has a VBAT pin and no voltage regulator. If we check the total capacitance, I'm getting 821 which is actually really good for not having a capacitor but I'm still going to add one anyway just to be sure and by the way these capacitors do have polarity which means you have to put positive on positive negative on negative it has a negative stripe so that's how you know which leg is negative and I did zip tie it uh, to the battery lead just make sure that it doesn't like break off or anything total capacitance now 1,276 microfarads. That is pretty good. That's damn good, actually. Now let's take the multimeter, check for continuity. So I'm getting nothing here. I'm going to test the edge of the carbon fiber. Nothing there. Swap to the other side. Test again. Nothing there. I visually inspected to make sure that everything is good, and I am. So let's plug in battery and hope we don't get any smoke. And we're golden. Fly controller is not hot, motors are not hot, and ESCs are not hot. Perfect. And that does it for this one. Not sure what video I'm making next, but hope to see you there.